biggest questions heading into training camp for OU. Um, we did this last year. It was a fun conversation. We're going to do it again. Do you want to start on offense or defense? Or do you want to alternate? How do we want to do it? Let's just – let's fire away on offense. Okay. Let's get the ball rolling here. Uh, what is – what are – give me your first big question for offense. I, it's, it's offensive line. It's specifically tackle. And I'm not going to say that's my only question on offense. There's, there's other things. But the priority level pretty much everywhere else for me is really low. Offensive line, really, really high. I'm with you, and I just I can't get what BV said at Big 12 Media Days to me out of my mind. I asked him about the position battles, right? And Tyler Guyton was the first guy that he mentioned. So when you think about that battle to be an offensive tackle, be a starting offensive tackle. Now, remember, Beanbo, he's had no issues playing multiple guys over these last couple of seasons, you know, getting guys – snaps if they have earned them in practice but can Tyler Guyton beat out Anton Harrison or Wanya Morris can Savion Bird put everything together and challenge to be a starter what about Aaron Parks All right that that was a guy that was taking reps with the ones in spring practice so i i think that that out of all the position battles on offense Offensive tackle is is the most interesting. I, I really believe that. And I think that it is very much an open competition. Uh, we assume that Harrison and Morris are going to be the guys, but I don't think those guys have those jobs locked down. Uh, I really think that whether it's Bird or Guyton or Parkside, I, I think someone can go and take it, and I'm interested to see if that happens. Yeah, Venables came on my radio show yesterday and I asked him about position battles and the first one he talked about was offensive tackle and I thought it was really interesting the way he answered it he talked about Harrison and you know it's the same thing that you said all last year is he Vittables said he has to be consistent you can't have you can't have flashy plays here and there and then, you know, just be up and down. you got to be consistent. You've got to be a, an every single snap kind of guy. And then he talked to Wanye Morris and very direct again. Wanye Morris needs to get the most out of his potential. Like He needs to squeeze everything that he has out of his athletic ability. And he said he's had a great summer and he's working on that, but those two guys very direct in um, you know criticism, whatever you want to say that things that they want to work on, very direct. So I you know I think that that's going to be the spot to watch on offense. And the good th good thing is there's don't you feel good about the depth there? At least guys that are competing for the starting jobs. Yeah, for sure, I, I do, uh, especially not only. Like, I feel good about the level of talent there. I, I think I feel better about it this year than I did last year. Just from the conversations I've had. But the one thing I like about that entire situation is every one of those guys, they know the jobs are essentially up for grabs, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, sometimes you go into camp and you're you're a backup and you're like, man, do I really have a chance to win a job, get on the field? Tyler Guyton and Aaron Parks and Savion Bird, yeah. So they better have that attitude and bring it to the practice field for training camp because I'll tell you right now, man, Bill Beatonbow will play whoever he can trust. Mm -hmm. He will. He will stick the guy out there who he knows what he's going to get from. He can live with that. He's not. He does not want the ups and downs. So if Harrison and Morris aren't showing a level of consistency that is satisfactory to Beatonbow, don't be surprised, man. I'm just telling you now, we'll see how it goes for that entire group. But yeah, that's gonna be that'd be a fun one to keep tabs on, man. And it's a 
it's clearly an important position also. Yeah. And one more small note that I didn't think about until just now. Did you watch any of Venable's press conference yesterday? Watch the entire thing. One of the questions was interesting. And he just kind of like somewhat dismissed it, but he but he really didn't. Someone asked about position changes. Are there going to be any position changes? And at first he's like, I don't, what do you mean? He's like, and all the guys on offense are still playing <laughs> offense. All the guys yeah. on defense are still playing defense. But then he said, there, you know, there may be some moving guys from the outside to the inside and some things like that. But as far as like big time position changes, I don't think so. So like when you start talking about tackle, like, there's there's the potential maybe if a tackle battle's going really well, you got two guys that are playing really good, uh, and maybe you're not having the play that you want on the inside at guard that we've seen Beatonville move those guys around in to out and out to in. I I think Savion Bird would be a good guard. Yeah. I really do. Like if he if if he's a road grader. I mean, he just looks he looks well put together, right? So and he seems pissed off all the time, which is kind of a guard mentality, right? Yeah, basically, just <laughs> mad at the world. Yeah, I, I think that's that's also something that that we need to keep track of because ultimately your goal is get your five best on the field that play well together. That's not always your five most talented. Mm-hmm. Get your five best that play well together. So we'll see. We'll see what it looks like, man. But that is the offensive tackle battle is going to be fun. My my question mark for offense. It's not. It's not very exciting. QB two. I, I know that it's not exciting until it is right. Yeah, I. I know that we're all excited about what Dylan Gabriel can be in Jeff Levy's offense. We all have high expectation, high expectations for him. We think he's going to produce at a high level, but the backup quarter quarterback situation is interesting. I mean, and I think that Levy and that offensive staff, they're looking for a guy to separate himself from the others in training camp. I mean, there's no doubt that Gabriel's the starter, but between general booty and Davis Bevel and Nick Evers, those guys are going to be battling for that QB2 spot. And you never know what can happen in football, man. I mean, just ask Dylan Gabriel how last season went for him, right, with the collarbone. He can roll an ankle. He can get a stinger, whatever. Like, they will need the backup quarterback to make a play or two at some point in the season. So, I want to feel better better about the backup quarterback situation when OU comes out of training camp. I want the coaching staff to feel better about it. So whether it's Booty, Bevel, or Evers, one of these guys needs to outplay the others and make it crystal clear that they are QB2. Yep, I agree. And I think it's going to be Booty. I just, I, I, people have always said you're a big booty guy. I am. I am always have been, uh, he's, he's got the pedigree, uh, his, his route to where he got at Oklahoma is a fascinating one. Just kind of how he flew under the radar as a high school recruit played at, I think four different high schools, um, you know, during the COVID period where coaches couldn't go out and see guys. So he just kind of, just like I said, flew under the radar a little bit, but really athletic, really competitive, super tough. I think he's got a good chance to to fight for that number two spot. Yeah, it's gonna be. It's good. I know it's not the most exciting thing in the world, but it is important. And, and also, that relationship between QB two and QB one is important, right? Being able to support the starter, like there is a. There's almost a therapist's role for the backup quarterback. So who emerges as that guy that will that will be kind of the sounding board for Dylan Gabriel throughout the season? That I, I know right. that it's I know funny. it's stupid, but it is important. 
it's so funny. A quarterback throws an interception and jogs off the field. There's the second quarterback going like, hey, that wasn't on you. That, you know, he ran the wrong route. You know, it wasn't yeah. a bad throw. <laughs> I, I saw the perfect example of that when I was in Detroit with Matthew Stafford and Dan Orlovsky. Dan was that guy for Stafford. Right. He was his eyes on the sideline. He was the guy that he that could speak the language and talk things through with with Stafford. And it's important. I know it, it it's it's a boring conversation, but I do believe that that role of backup quarterback is important. Okay, you got any other big questions on offense? I got one more. Uh well, I think I don't have a question with how I think Camp's gonna go. I think that um gray is going to be the guy at running back uh he's he's your most versatile he's you know athletic got some uh moves in the open field obviously good catching the football uh, and i think that he's going to be the guy but venables continues to make it a point to talk about marcus major and you know i i don't know if I don't know if he has a chance to carve out a starting role, but I think he has a chance to to be a a heavy contributor. Big. They don't have another guy like him on the roster. Like he is, he's a muscle. He's a he's a bowling ball. He's built for running, you know, downhill, and that's what you want to do in this scheme. You want to stretch it and then turn it downhill while everyone's going lateral, and just and and. And, and plow through the middle. Like, so I, I think that there's a chance that Marcus major can carve out a pretty nice role. If you know, he handles his business like, and, and that's, you know, that's been a, a problem for him, frankly, up to this point. So I think the running back room is, is interesting. Plus the young guys, Javante Barnes and Sawchuck, you know, have opportunities. Yeah. And let's not forget Bentavious Thompson. I mean, how yeah. does, how does he fit? factor into all this right i know a couple members of the offensive staff really likes the way that he go he goes about his business so that you're right man that running back room especially that battle for rb2 is it's gonna be interesting now the last thing i have on offense is usually in training camp there's there's a surprise wide receiver that kind of emerges where you know they're coming out of the camp and the coaches are telling you and i hey man this guy was making plays and, and we feel good about Mims and Stoops and Weiss. And I, I feel good about Farouk right now with everything we've heard about him, but who's going to be that surprise playmaker that emerges from camp, right? Could it be, is it going to be one of the transfers? JJ Hester, LV Bunkley Shelton. Uh, could it be one of the freshmen in Jaden Gibson and Nick Anderson I feel like that group of four, like one guy, we're going to be hearing, man, yeah, that guy, he's he's going to help us. He's going to play a lot. I just don't know what guy that is right now. Yeah, and I think it's more likely this season than it typically is. Quarterback and wide receiver chemistry is huge, and quarterbacks always have their favorites. Well, Dylan Gabriel's never played a game with these guys, right? right? And – so if you're a freshman or a transfer, you've got a, a way better opportunity than trying to like, you know, fit your way into the group that's all, already kind of set. The hierarchy's already kind of there. It's it's not nearly as set. I know he's been to spring with some of these guys, um, but I don't know. I, I think that there's definitely going to be someone emerge. And the guy everyone was talking about early on in spring was Nick Anderson. Right. right? That was the name until he, until he had um, some minor issue. That was that was the name. So if I had a a pick to click right now early on, I'd say Nick Anderson. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, let's move to the defensive side of the ball. This is your realm, man. What uh what questions you got? Can I go first? Yeah, go ahead. Just because you you won't you never brag on yourself, and <laughs> it, I'm gonna brag on you a little a little bit here. My biggest question for the defense is who will emerge at Mike Packer? Because I've seen it firsthand and talking to you, you lived it. BV puts so much on that position 
when it comes to directing traffic for the defense. I would like to see, and I kind of hate this term, but I would like to see an alpha emerge, whether it's Stutzman or Aguebu. I, I just think of what that position means and how the Mike Backer and BV's defense becomes kind of the figurehead of the defense. They need one of those guys to emerge as that guy and to emerge as the leader of that defense. And, I, and I'm not saying that both of them won't play, right? I think both Aguebu and Stutzman are extremely talented, athletic, gifted players, and they're, they're both going to play. But BB loves having that one guy that he feels like he can put everything on. And no one knows that better than you, man. Yeah, well, it's true. And it usually starts with uh, years of ridicule before you're there. And I, there's a method to the madness. You have to be able, you have to be able to handle that adversity, number one. But number two, you have to know everything. You have to know everything. There, there's, there's teams and there's defenses where if you're the, if you're the best player, uh, the most athletic, and, and you make a bunch of productive plays, but you screw up a bunch, I, it's fine. I, you could be the guy that had a lot of tackles but had – eight mental mistakes and no one really says anything because you're the most productive player that does not happen with Venables. You will be ridiculed, ridiculed, embarrassed in front of your teammates, called out in front of everyone over and over and over until you know it. And you can't stand out and be a star when you're getting ridiculed constantly by your coach in front of everyone. So there's like this massive pressure to know everything. And once you get there and you know everything, you direct traffic and it's easy. And, and you get everyone lined up and you know what's happening. You got the communication going on. So it works out really well. Now, who that's going to be, I, I don't know. Judging by the way he speaks to Stutzman, it's probably going to be him at some point. It's just a matter of, you know, how long does it take him to get there? Because that's, you're right. You know, you look at you look at Mike and Will Backer. I don't know who the starters are going to be. I mean, and, and I think that there's there's um, there's definitely capable guys that can play both of those spots. And I I just I I feel good about whoever that combination is going to be. Yeah, but it's no. definitely going to be critical. Like that's like not necessarily who wins the battle, but that someone does win it, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah, that someone emerges. Right, yes. Right, to be that guy, I think is, uh, I like you said, I think it's critical. All right, what do you got? Defense, biggest questions. Um, I think the big, I, I, feel, I feel good about inside backer, like, as far as, like, as long as someone emerges, like we talked about, both of those spots are going to be critical. Um, I feel pretty good about safety. I think Bowman and Key Lawrence are going to be the guys there, but there's some good talent behind them. I think the most critical um, position battles are both corners and nickel. That's that's to me where, you know, there's there's so much that makes or breaks you at those spots. Corner, he said they may play eight, eight corners. So, you know, if you got eight corners, you definitely don't have two. Um, is one way to say that, but I think it's really a good thing because I think there's plenty of good talent there, uh, whether it's transfer guys or guys that uh, now have some some tenure there, like Woody Washington. Uh, you know, I, I think there's good talent, but who's going to win those roles? This defense is going to be different than the previous defense. Previous defense, we played, you know, a ton of cover three and a ton of cover one man-to-man -man and cover three there's going to be way less man-to-man -man, way more zone so what that does is it kind of takes away the you know when you play man-to-man -man, who's got length who's got athleticism who can run like hell who can compete 
when you play zone, who can think, right? Who are the smartest guys? Who under who understands route combinations, down and distance, wide receiver splits, uh, how we're playing certain route combinations. What am I getting off of this release versus that release? Um, you know, just it's it's a little bit different. Now, obviously, you always want the most athletic guys, but playing more zone leaves the window open for some of the guys that maybe don't have the athletic skills, but can think it and can make plays and be in the right spot and, uh, and, and get interceptions. And the other thing that's going to be important, tackling, tackling. When you're in zone, you're in the fit. A lot of times you're required to be in the fit for the running game, uh, for the screen game, and you've got to be able to tackle. I think tackling is going to be critical for that position battle as well. Yeah. And I, if, if spring practice is any indication, uh, there will be plenty of tackling oh, yeah. when, when they're in full pads. So they'll, uh, they'll have a pretty good understanding of what corners want to come up and make some plays. But yeah, man, I, I feel really good about Woody Washington being one of those two guys mm -hmm. just from hearing BV talk about him after spring ball, talk about his level of consistency. But I think that other spot, is that in the nickel spot are are wide open. I will say this. I I really I really appreciate what Justin Broyles brings to the team. I do. Leadership, the guy cares, right? Which is important. And they brought him to Big 12 Media Day. He was there. So that that meant something to me, but I feel like we know what his ceiling as a player is. So can someone that maybe has some more physical tools get on the field in front of him? And, and what? how does that change the ceiling of the defense? I, I don't know, but I, I know he's reliable. He's a good leader and all those things. I'm not trying to say, hey, don't let that guy play. No, no, no. He deserves to play. But there are guys on this roster that have more length and more athleticism Will those guys be trustworthy enough for BV to put them on the field? Harrington. Harrington. Please get your get get your stuff right. Had he's had a good summer, had a good spring. He's competing at the nickel spot. Incredibly athletic, incredibly explosive. If he can get that spot down, look out look out because you all of a sudden go from um a guy at nickel like and just like you said i a lot of respect for broils that he does a lot of things well but he's, he's he's not that big not that fast not that explosive he's in the right place he does the right things and and and, and that's what you have to have it's more important to have guys that are in the right place than great athletes that get you beat but if Harrington could could ever pull it together and be able to match what Broyles can do mentally it, it's an absolute game changer and back to style of defense nickel previously incredibly difficult why a lot of man to man a lot of man to man means you're you're covering that slot receiver which is usually a guy like Mims Fastest guy on the field, quickest guy on the field, uh, targeted for a lot of stuff, a lot of route combinations to try and get that guy open to get first downs. That's really tough. Zone, not nearly as tough. Beat the shit out of him on the line of scrimmage whenever he comes off. Use your size. Release him if 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 you're releasing the seam. Like there's there's a way more tools at your advantage there if you're playing zone with the nickel instead of man to man. Yeah, and. Not even to mention, you know, with the with the zone pressure stuff that BV likes, mm -hmm. that that nickel can become become a serious weapon in the blitz game. So six, in in Harrington six three two ten two fifteen. Yeah. So we'll see. You got anything else? Defensive um, questions. I I really, I think the defensive line is going to be. The only real question I have there is what Jalen Redmond do we get? Right. Because I feel good about the rotational guys. I feel good about Jordan Kelly. 
I we know what we're going to get from Ellerson and uh, or Ellison and Roberson. Um, if we get Jalen Redmond, I uh, healthy, explosive, engaged, consistent. It's a game changer. Right, we have if if we get him at that level, we have a chance to have the best defensive line in the Big Twelve. With where I think Downs is going to be, with where I think Stripling is is going to be, if you add an interior guy like Redmond, that is just you know flying off the ball, causing all kinds of disruption on the inside, that turns into a hell of a combination. But the problem has been with Jalen Redmond, you can't. You, you can't um, uh, lean on him to be there every single game, every single practice, down in, down out. Uh, there's been a lot of injury there. There's been uh, taking snaps off and time off, and then there's been explosive moments. But if he can bring those explosive moments and, and turn into a consistent football player, it really unlocks the potential of this defense. I completely agree. Uh, the only The only other question I have is, on the defensive side, what transfer will have the biggest impact? You know, wh whether that's, you know, we, there's a lot of them, right? Jeffrey Johnson, Jonah Laulu, TD Roof, CJ Colton, Trey Morrison, uh, Kanai Walker. Yeah, all those guys aren't going to play significant roles, in my opinion. But who of that group or uh, what, uh, I mean, maybe it's a couple guys. Who out of that group? Are we going to be talking about after training camp going, okay, yeah, this guy's going to be a playmaker. This guy's going to have a significant role. I, I assume Jeffrey Johnson's going to be, you know, right in the middle of the rotation there at the defensive line. Um, uh, TD roof is reliable. We don't know much about CJ Colden, right? Morrison did some good things in the spring. Walker did some good things in the spring, but training camp's a different animal, man. So, I'm I'm interested to see which transfer on the defensive side has the biggest impact. Well, if he can play like he looks, it's Kanai Walker. No kidding. <laughs> that looks incredible. He is he is a physical specimen, and he's done some really good things. He's super strong, competitive, uh, tough as hell. He's got some attitude to him. Um, I think he's he's got a great upside. Um, TD Roof. I, you know, he's a guy, like you said, you could trust limited by some size and athleticism stuff. But again, you'd rather have a guy out there that is always in the right place, always making the play that he's supposed to can get everyone lined up, can get everything communicated. That's TD roof. He'll do that every single day for you. So it's good to have that, that consistency and that veteran leadership there from a guy like TD roof. And I'm with you. I think, I think Jeff Johnson's going to, I think he's going to fit into the defensive line rotation and and be a consistent guy. He's not he's he's not going to turn into Jalen Redmond though. No, right? no. you know he, I, does, I, he doesn't have the physical talent he's got. It's just right. nothing wrong with saying that. Right. So, um, but if you got a rotation of good, consistent defensive linemen, it's what you need. Absolutely.